This is so weird. Obviously, I am um, not in my usual location. I am in my childhood house. And I just wanted to record here at the end of the month, making it very difficult for me to edit in time. <clears throat> Hello, I am Felda Blythe, and welcome back to the first in a very long time, <laughs> a deity deep dive. I started researching Hera last year. As you can see here, this is a small sample of the books that I own in real life. All of the yellow tabs here are ones that mention Hera. And most importantly, these are all aspects of Hera that are um, not Homeric, I should say, which we will touch on a bit. Even this Homeric hymn bit, we will touch maybe on this because the Homeric hymn to Pythia and Apollo actually showcases Hera in a very interesting way. So when I first started researching Hera, even like before this video, she started coming across as deceptively simple. I mean, nearly every source that I saw listed her queen of heaven, the goddess of women, the goddess of the sky, goddess of marriage, married to Zeus. But I knew that that couldn't have been the reason. See, I was kind of confused why people my age, especially many of them who weren't married or didn't identify as women, like what? they felt called to about Hera. So I was like, I don't, so, there's something more here that I'm missing. In the book, The Gods of the Greeks, Erica Simon laments what she calls the descent of Hera. I'm gonna read this quote to you. Hera, so precisely drawn in Goethe's time, became blurry and indistinct in the shadow of an indeterminate goddess of marriage, birth, and women. Hera continued to be boiled down by classicists and mythic reinterpretations until she reached the depths of her scholarly view in Nielsen, infamous Nielsen, in his now slightly infamous handbook on Greek religion, in which he declared, <clears throat> Fundamental is that Hera exists only as a spouse of Zeus. The fact that she is a spouse puts a definitive stamp on her jealous, haughty character as delineated by Homer brutal. After this proverbial nail in the coffin in the study of Hera, male classicists pretty much after Nielsen's book and quite a bit before didn't bother to even look at any other aspect of Hera. They didn't bother to look at the archaeology, which is what we're going to do. Basically, she became a foot, merely a footnote in history books until now. I embarked on this video out of an abundance of curiosity. Common belief had wrapped up Hera in a neat little bow is the jealous wife of Zeus who is the butt of jokes and then sort of helps women fulfill traditional gender roles but there are unanswered questions and the more I pulled at the string of that neat little bow the more it unraveled why are some of her most famous priests men why does she have the title Hera the widow I pulled and pulled and found Chthonic Hera, Hera whose face is in the moon, Hera who turns the seasons and brings forth life, Hera the queen who holds the key, Hera who is described by the poet Alcaeus as the producer of all. This is not your Homer's Hera, nor the Hera that has been demeaned for centuries. This is Hera who has existed for centuries apart from Zeus and who for centuries after eclipsed his worship. Ladies and gentlemen, and scholars on the outskirts of the gender binary, I present to you in her unadulterated glory, Hera. If you have never seen any of my other, uh, do you, stop, looking, stop looking at me. <laughs> Listen, I'll send you a link to the video, then you can look at me. If you've never seen any of my other uh, deity deep dive videos, hello and welcome. We are not gonna be covering any myths today because I don't usually cover myths in the DDD Dives videos. I'm more interested in contemporaneous study of how they were worshipped in the archaeology. So if you came here thinking I'm going to talk about mythology, you're wrong. I have like a hundred percent certainty that if I were to ask anybody, regardless of who they were, a myth about Hera, it would be Zeus fucked around. Hera got jealous. Hijinks ensued. End of story. So that's not very interesting to me. So instead, just like with my Hecate video, we are going to start at the beginning. Now, Hecate's origins were complicated because of the lack of scholarship. Hera's origins are hard to talk about because of what I like to call 
scholarly ignorance where we have all this information about this person, but we're going to suppress it. This is exactly what happened with the idea that Greek statues were white. That information has been known since the study of classics. It has been known that their statues were not white and that they were painted. However, that information was suppressed because I don't know why. <laughs> they just wanted to perpetuate that myth that they were these unadorned beauties when in fact they were very garishly painted <laughs> don't try this at home okay this is the behind the scenes you don't get to see oh are you still connected please you, okay time and time again across the recent scholarship i came across the same shocking piece of evidence not only was hera an extremely old goddess but rather her first temple in Samos was the very first enclosed temple to any Greek deity. That is huge. Why did Hera, of all the gods, get the first full proper temple? Excavation further revealed that that temple had that that temple was to Hera alone without a single reference to Zeus. In fact, it was built over 150 years before Zeus would see any of his own enclosed temples. And additionally, they have found votive offerings there that were from Armenia, Babylon, Assyria, and Egypt. What? <laughs> that suggests that not only was her worship very old already at that point in time, but already very famous. And when Zeus was finally paired with someone on mainland Greece, it was with Dione and not with Hera. Caveat here, we do have some evidence of Mycenaean or Minoan era and Dewe, which is the Minoan Zeus. This suggests that the pairing might have come from Crete. The idea of Hera apart from Zeus is sometimes discussed in Hera Kere. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Commonly translated as Hera the Divorced or Hera the Widowed. The second aspect is often used to bolster evidence for Chthonic Hera, which we're going to get into next. However, another translation of that is Hera the Separated, perhaps a reference to a time when Hera steps away from Zeus to ritually restore her virginity. Though the, the tomb of Zeus and the death of Zeus, I feel like is a whole other conversation for another video, but we are going to touch on it briefly because it's it's one of those things where it was thought to be one thing for a while and then a piece of evidence came out and people were like wait is that actually what that means but anyway so now we're going to shift speaking of chthonic hera we're going to shift to one of the most fascinating topics of hera is hera as earth goddess or hera as tied to the elements and the seasons hera as an earth goddess this was one that shocked me i was reading through the french text that i uh, checked out from the library and actually was surprisingly easier to read than any English based text that I had come across, which was interesting. <laughs> and it mentioned Era Chthonic, Chthonic Hera. And I was like, excuse me, what? I was reading through some of the English texts that I have, which I will share the, the names of those documents on the screen here because I left my computer on the ground. So they also mentioned Chthonic Hera. Now, it's important to note when it comes to the designation Chthonic, that Chthonic doesn't necessarily mean death-related deity, although it is often kind of used in conjunction with death deities like Hades, Persephone. People kind of see it as relating to the underworld. However, Chthonic ultimately just means of the earth, in a sense, which is why nymph worship, if you see my nymph worship video, is so complicated because it's like, well, they're of the earth, but they they don't necessarily receive Chthonic offerings. So we do have evidence of Hera receiving Chthonic-based offerings. So Hera is also a prophetic deity. Many, many important deities were also seen as having prophets of some kind or oracles. And Hera's oracles were dictated to having occurred at night which indicates a more chthonic aspect because more uranic deities, deities who are heavenly, generally it's you're supposed to do that oracle at the daytime. Now, this is the scholar's assumption. It could always be perhaps that was at one temple's designation, but it definitely, along with the other evidence of like Hera the widowed, uh, that we have chthonic Hera. Now, Hera as just an earth goddess in general, Burkhart 
as well as many others, put forth the idea of Hera as a pre mycenae as a uh, archaic mother goddess, earth goddess figure. Now, that is a whole conversation for another video on the kind of dodgy scholarship on the idea of a great earth goddess, which is also like potentially true in certain regards. Generally, that idea, I kind of, when I see it posited, I tend to look at it with a, quite a bit of suspicion there. There is some evidence to where we see synchronizations between Hera and Rhea, who is also synced with Kybele, who is a great goddess type figure of this, again, queen of heaven, queen of the earth. Now, as I mentioned, the poet Alcaeus refers to Hera as the producer of all. This is actually not the first time that we see the idea of Hera as a creator deity put forth. In fact, in the Hellenistic religion book that I looked at, I post on the screen the quote about Hera being a creator, Hera the creator. So that's like, huh, that's a very interesting <laughs> cosmology there, because that is definitely not your Hesiodic cosmology there of Hera as a creator of the world, in a sense, or of the earth and those aspects. Other evidence of Hera as an earth goddess comes from her, the philologist's study of the word Hera. That's one of the other things that's confusing about Hera is that the name Hera, we're not entirely sure what it means. Now, many contemporaneous philosophers suggested that Hera and Er, A-E-R, were related. And that since Hera sounded like Er, that they saw her as a goddess of air, of the air element, queen of heaven, Again, all of that. In fact, people used Homer in the scene where Zeus talks about hanging Hera from the sky as a to support this idea of Hera as air. And in some other sort of mystery cults, Hera is called in as air. However, another idea has been put forth that Hera relates to Ora, or the Horai, the Orai, the daemons of the seasons. In fact, Hera is actually oftentimes depicted alongside these entities, the Horai, um, the Orai, the daemons of the seasons. And no one's really quite sure how that happened. Uh, that's, that's what's confusing about Hera is because she kind of was a footnote in history. A lot of these things were just kind of accepted as happening, but no one bothered to ask why they were happening. So this idea of Hera as one of or the leader of the seasons is interesting. So some people even, some scholars even go so far as to suggest that maybe at one point she turned to the seasons. Maybe she sort of predates Demeter in that way. Well, in mainland Greece, because like a lot of these deities sort of cropped up, <laughs> get it crops, cropped up at around the same, not around the same time, but they cropped up around the Fertile Crescent and then sort of made their way to mainland Greece where they were adopted and adapted into various figures to fit that cosmology. So this is not to say that Hera predates Demeter in that sense, but that she could have been a Demeter-like goddess in um, Samos, for example. Another aspect of Chthonic Hera that could be interesting is Hera of the marketplace. So one of the aspects of Juno, who we might touch on though, Juno was really like her own deity in many senses before she was syncretized with Hera. But one of the aspects that has confused scholars for forever is Juno of the marketplace. Why is Juno attached to currency? Many people thought this was just kind of like a misreading of her name, like of an epithet. But other people have found evidence to suggest Hera's attachment to prosperity and fortune, which is again, a chthonic aspect. The idea of money is often related to physical mining, which is chthonic, obviously, of the earth. So new evidence has shown that Hera might have been, in fact, related to currency and the marketplace and mining in that regard, which then got kind of sort of swept into Juno. So that is another evidence to support chthonic Hera. Okay, next thing. You know, originally when I was going to do this, some of my friends suggested like, oh, you should do two videos or more than one video because, you know, maybe because I was complaining that there was so much information to cover. And then I was like, no. But as I'm going through this, you know what? Hera deserves it. Honestly, after all of this being a footnote in the 
history books, she deserves at least two videos on the subject. So this first part of the video is going to be, what did I say, in defense of Hera, it's going to sort of be defending her on her own. And then the second one is going to be exploring more interesting mythology about Hera and what archaeology actually tells us about her worship because she deserves it. We're in a race against time because, oh, because um, I haven't got to go when my computer's dying. Um, but anyway, so anyway, we're going to do a second video on Hera where I'm going to cover more of her myths, like interesting aspects of her that are not covered in your mama's Homer or anyone's Homer, actually. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Hera uh, in defense of Hera, looking at some of her early origins and archaeology as a goddess of uh, who is a prophetess, a goddess who is potentially a creator goddess, earth goddess, goddess of the seasons. Uh, some aspects that I didn't really touch on were Hera, the uh, protectress of the sea. We might talk about that with Samos, but that aspect kind of gets lumped in with pretty much any Greek <laughs> god. Naturally, a lot of the gods are sea-based. I don't know if I'm going to talk about Juno. Let me know. I haven't finished writing the second video yet. So in the comments, let me know if I should talk about Hera's syncretism with Juno. I have some feelings on that. I don't necessarily think it's as useful to talk about syncretisms with Juno as it is for other Roman syncretisms, but let me know your thoughts. I can talk about that too. All that, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. And I'm excited to talk about how she was actually worshipped and how we can adapt that worship today and what all of this means for the modern worshiper. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was a good short introduction in defense of Hera, who is just literally the queen of heaven. She does not sit nest. She has not just sat at the right hand of Zeus. She has been a creator. She has existed apart from Zeus and she has really held down her own as one of the most important goddesses of the Greek city-states. So with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Oh, shout out to my patrons. Thank you to Charles Schneider, Tiny Atlas, Ikeda Hakubi. Thank you to Dawn. Thank you to Paris. Thank you to Amber Kelly. Thank you to Micro Maria. Thank you to Brooke Smoody. Thank you to Laura Riberio. Thank you to Grumpy Grandpa. And thank you to Hayek Quintos. And of course, thank you to Ambrose. If you want to join my Patreon, I will leave a link above. I really love my patrons. Patrons get an extra video where we talk about book reviews every month. They also get to see videos when they first are edited and uploaded. That's it. <laughs> My computer died. Um, patrons also get to see this. Let me be chaotic. Woo! Goodbye!